bumper baby bottle. Rubber bumper baby bottle. That's my red warm up. Leather, yellow leather. Red, red leather. leather. Yellow, yellow leather. leather. <gasps> That's my kink. And oh, this yes. is Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling, baby. The only wrestling podcast on the Marshland Media Network. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm I'm currently talking to Mike Fantastic. He's going to come on for another wrestling show called Hollywood Heel Turn. Yeah, but until that guy comes around, <laughs> fuck him. You're talking to old <gasps> Goose yeah. Baby yeah. Sean. And with me, as always, is the lovely, the incomparable, the mesmerizing, I believe you would call him Mollum James. Hi, I'm James. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> Give us a five-star we... iTunes review. Do it, you coward. Get out of here, but stay on the app. Click down. You'll find it either on iTunes or Spotify. It helps out for real. For real stuff. But for reals. And if you want to hear us talk about weird bullshit and uh, Lucha Underground Season 1, Episode 17. Uh, we 17 in. What is seven? Is that a thing? Yeah, it's Juggalo shit. What is 17 in me? Oh, you've been explained this over on Shuffling the Deck, found in this feed as well. That's how we get new listeners. I forget something and then I have to re-listen to old podcast episodes. Uh-huh. A war started in Mexico, yes? Real Sorry. quick. I got real excited by the title. We will need to do a Shuffling the Deck soon when Violent J solo album emerges. And boy, oh boy, I'm confident it's going to be the worst album we ever reviewed on it. <laughs> We've reviewed so many bad albums. No, this, I've sent you one of them. Did you listen to that good pussy song? Absolutely not. I will. I need to. I still, I I need to, uh, but I haven't. I was thinking he's released, I think, two singles and both of them are trash. Maybe we just do an episode where you live listen to them. Like, we can't play it on the show, but we can count it down. And then you just go, wow, man, this blows ass. It blows dogs for quarters. You know what really scares me is that I end up liking the album. And because it's a live reaction, I don't have time to lie properly. And that everybody knows I have terrible taste in things. Guys, I... I can't do that to quarters. This do- this blows dogs for nickels. Wow. That's so cheap for blowing a dog. Uh-huh. But, you know, it, you then get passive income because you film it and throw it on, like, beastphiliaforums.net. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And it's so important to build a community in uh-huh. whatever field you're in. Yeah. So, they, I mean, really, I'm not blowing dogs for quarters or for nickels. I'm blowing dogs for the community. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The juggalo community. <laughs> 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 oh, man. I wish there were more juggalos in this episode, but I still enjoyed this episode. Yeah, we got Vampiro. That's one. We got Vampiro. That's enough. We got uh, Striker, baby. I don't know. I no. Feel like, I feel like he would hang out. He tried to sell us a condo. I need a condo. It's where I keep all the quarters I get. Oh, hell yeah, Unrelated dude. reasons. It's because you're, you and Torchy and her spouse are like, it's too cramped in here. Nah, we're just trying to find room. Wait a minute now. I don't know. I still don't know how to respond to this joke, to this bit that me and Torchy are roommates. Uh, Torchy's into it. <laughs> I know. It's, cause it's, not a, it's not a roast, but it's a lie. And I'm very uncomfortable with lying. You are also, you need a condo so you can put stand ups in every week, right? Wait, what now? For oh, a comedy yeah, I a condo. House. Yeah, I need a flop house. Yeah. I, I, need to, I, need, I need a place where I can never wash the sheets uh-huh. and let the stench of piss just kind of linger. Or the stench of bacon. Mm-hmm. And where I can watch all my favorite recaps, <gasps> like a recap to this episode of uh, Lucha Underground, episode 17, A War Started in Mexico, where we see, did you like that transition? I oh, did. I know you did. Yeah, baby. Alberto's still fighting Tejano. No. Whatever. That, at this point, and it, because it's been like, I think this is their third episode together uh-huh. now. It feels so removed from the rest of the temple. Do oh, you get yeah. That? Like. I like even from the from the from this uh from yeah from this recap I was like yeah it doesn't feel this it feels like they're doing their own little TV show and then it, meanwhile we're over here watching Happy Days while Jody and Chachi is struggling in the ratings. It feels like this where if we were to get a show within a show where we see the behind the scenes 
seedy stuff going on. That's every other wrestling performance and then like hey here's the main event this is what the show actually is not the show within the show yeah but also the reason this show i think is special is because the show within a show Mm -hmm. like like what sets lucha underground apart from so much other even today rest like there's no wrestling show past or present that it was or future maybe i don't know what the future is Lucha Underground Season 6. That's the future. Oh, we can only hope. And then Lucha Underground the movie. Six seasons and a movie. And then the serials and the toy lines Uh and the merchandise. The merchandise. The recap where Phoenix Phoenix? Phoenix is kissing Katarina and Mill is punching chairs. We're recording this one. Hey, you know what? A a little bit of upfrontness. We're recording this one comparatively early, especially for a guy who just watched the episode last night. Hey, how you doing? So my brain is killing it. Oh, yeah. I woke up at I set an alarm for you, Sean. I set an alarm for me, too. Normally, I just wake up with the sun. That's. You're what the why? What is wrong with you, my beautiful woodland spirit? I wake up with the sun, and so like in summertime, I'm so waking lyrical. up at five. That's that's why because the sun wakes up and I do too. I go for a walk and then I work out. Got to get these cum gutters going downtown. Of course, of course, of course. And then also the cat's feeder goes off at six. So generally hearing Nicole like a ghost and I think you've heard it, a ghost mm-hmm. in the background go because it's also coming through a cheap speaker. It goes Socks and butter, butter and socks. And that repeats three (laughs) times. So I'm awake and I hear the cats dart over to the feeder and then they start screaming and then it pours out food for them. I have not heard this. Oh. (laughs) So you wake up to the sun and the sound of the woman whom you love's voice uh-huh. serenading the cats whom you love. Yeah. That's so romantic, I'm going to vom. That's so romantic, I'm going to bring back the phrase vom from 1998. This is what we do. We get uh-huh. Torchy and her spouse to record a like singing song message to you. And then we'll also get a cameo from, I don't know, like uh, some big Buffalo Bills man. And then I splice (laughs) those together and that's your alarm. Okay, so Torji and her partner are my socks and butters? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. And then then Josh Allen is my Nicole. Yeah, it all adds up. Uh Or Daniel Garcia. Ooh. Or Pepper Parks, a.k.a. The Blade. Oh, dang, I like that. Yeah, he's cool. He's from Buffalo and he wrestles and the crew is doing crew stuff and Big Rick and Sexy hate it. No! They just, they just hate this ding dangle crew. Ah. But we cut to the episode. Cueto's office. Dario is giddy. He's giddy over Alberto having his first match. <laughs> he, ooh, I'm going to have so many ratings. And he's offering a couple matches. He offers uh, Famous B. He's offering up Ricky Mandel. Mm-hmm. Basically some sort of job match. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of padding for the resume. Something to knock the rust off. I wrote down, here's all my jobbers. Take it or leave it. (laughs) Oh, okay, you'll do neither of those and just kind of dom me into giving you what you want. All right, that's that's what I do. That's kind of my thing. That's, That's how I get off. Yeah, Alberto wants Tejano. He demands Tejano. He refuses to take anything less than Tejano. In fact, he bullies the office supplies off of Dario's desk. To properly dom uh, Dario to give mm-hmm. him Alberto Vitahano main event tonight. I have never understood or felt a relationship with Dario Cueto until this episode because he's like, dude, if you're going up against Tejano, you got to give me at least a week to promote it. And I'm like, yes, I understand that so much. <laughs> Horror Crunk Entertainment. They were like, oh, yeah, we'll announce you on this date. And then, like, your album will come out a day later. I was like, you got to give me at least a month to promote it. We got to get in Please. there. February 10th, wherever music is found, just follow Marshland Monster. That was a beautiful point, as well as a beautiful uh, plug. 
But like total, I mean total. I mean I don't. It's so hard watching Alberto, and it's, especially with the rest of the episode being awesome, and the rest of the cast, like the rest of the roster, being really fucking tight, and just being like, <sighs> like I'm, I'm agreeing with I'm agreeing with Dario Quaid though about just general things because I hate this fucking man. Oh, I just understand as someone who has a lot of things to promo. Which hey, you want to know what mm-hmm. I love seeing, Sean? I don't know. And I'm scared, but based on your tone of your voice. Sean Marciniak liked this tweet promoting Sweaty Time Pro Wrestling, then nothing else. And I'm like, freaking retweet, baby. Retweet. It took me like a whole two days to come up with a quote tweet. Oh, my God. Just retweet. And then once you figure it out, unretweet it, then quote tweet. I don't know how to do that part. What, the un? retweet yeah it scares me you just go and you'll see it green you just click it again and it unretweets it i'm just gonna delete my twitter oh my god this sounds this sounds safe for everyone get on tiktok i am i just scroll okay amandita amandita excuse me is playing us to the desk we have a whole new how do you feel about amandita and what happened to el mariachi el bronx i thought this was a different band every episode I thought it was going to be that until it was Mariachi El Bronx for like, I think like five episodes in a row. It was a lot of Mariachi El Bronx. And maybe they realize like, hey, we can't just have a new person every single. Now that they're like, hey, we're doing in one weekend, nine episodes, let's say. Let's get them on mm. for nine episodes. Then next weekend, new people. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so we'll see a bunch of Emma de Tita. See, I'm going to fuck this name up. Emma de Tita. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a de titita. None of that's getting edited. I should also say, hey, Please. remember, we're shortening up episodes, getting right into it, and I am implementing the this movie's gay structure, the- meaning once we get 45 minutes into the edit, not into the record, into my edit, I stop taking out stutters and vocal pauses. Okay. That seems reasonable. We have two... Uh- Man, my notes are terrible. We have two uh, beautiful two matches. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> two feuds may be settled tonight. Uh, Alberto Tejano, as well as this next match coming up. We cut to the ring and it's Mil Muertes. Yes. An unforgiving presence walking to the ring <gasps> who makes <gasps> Vampiro uncomfortable and makes James horny as heck. I wouldn't say horny, aspirational because I want his ass. Like I can feel, mm-hmm. y- you know how it like, it's diagonal on the side. It looks like a polygon going into a keister. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm starting to get that diagonal and I'm like, yes, my, I'm almost a mill mullum. About to be a Triangle Man, Triangle Man, and you're gonna beat the shit out of Particle Man. Uh huh. And I'm gonna look like it. Picture this. Okay. Laura Croft, but on my ass. <laughs> you know her triangle boobies. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just picturing an entire Laura Croft model. Okay. But your ass. Yeah. Which is yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shove her up there. Well, great. <laughs> Phoenix. Versus Phoenix. Boo. Yay. Uh, Phoenix. <laughs> I like Phoenix. <laughs> Phoenix Wrestling, not only the Smash Mouth Luchador tonight, but his fiery jealousy. Because he's been making out with Katrina every day, all the goddamn day. And meanwhile, Mill is, I don't know, bullying Chavo, which is a noble endeavor. Hey, Mill, I love his style. The mm-hmm. beat you till you stay still style. This is not a long match, it, but it's a really nice match. Uh, like a little bummed. It only goes like a little over five minutes, 546. I wish they would have gotten the chance to really like explore their second act a bit. Because this is I, this is my favorite match of the night. There's only oh, yeah. three matches, and this is like by far my favorite. Mill makes the mightiest matches. There we go. That's alliteration. Hey, and Phoenix just does everything. Phoenix is coming down the stairs. Mill's got like pops out of the ring because it, he, Mill is pissed. Mill has legitimate beef with fucking Phoenix. So he's so he's like, you know what? I'm going to meet you on the outside as you're coming in. Phoenix leaps off of the railing, head scissors. 
before the anything, before before the bell rings, before old Jimmy John Jacobs sits down with his bag of popcorn to prepare for the match, immediately we get a head scissors off of a hand railing. Cut man style. Oh, we. Because I think he had scissors for his head. I think that's what made him the cut man. Yeah, one of the Mega Man, Mega guys. man villains, Mavericks. I, mean, I was more of a, more of a rock man uh, player myself, but you do you, boo. What? <laughs> it's the same game. Come on, man. Why are you so mad at that one? Oh, now you're going to be like, oh, I prefer Super Sentai over Power Rangers, but not because I like prefer it more. It's just like, I'm such otaku. Yeah, that's the bit I'm doing. Gross. <laughs> and after the head scissors spot, they don't even like immediately someone. They're still fighting to see who rolls who into the ring. Mm hmm. And fucking Phoenix, instead of ro instead of getting allowing himself to get rolled into the ring, he jumps onto the apron, backflips off, and super kicks Mill in the face. Again, like it's which, and it all goes to tell the story of Phoenix just has so many different ways to hit you, but Mill really only needs one because His as soon as they fists. get in the ring, yeah, he levels him, he decks him like a stack of playing cards. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And that becomes, and, it, and it's really, that's, in some ways, that's the basis of, like, Technico and Rudo, is that why Phoenix is kind of the perfect Technico in that sense, because he has so many different techniques and so, so many different maneuvers and so many different ways to get into those maneuvers to hit you, where Mill doesn't need all of them. He doesn't need to be flashy or even very technical. He has that smash mouth straight to the point. What did you order? Well, you're getting a ham sandwich because all you need is a ham sandwich. Keep your body going. Sean, can, can I be honest with you? I would love for you to be. Yeah, because no one else in this business is. Wow, how can you speak so true to my soul? That's something Mass Striker says during this match. <laughs> I missed that. Vampiro says, can I be honest with you? Then Stryker says, please do, because no one else in this business is. Matthew, I'm sorry that Vince McMahon hurt you. I truly am. He hurt a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, and you want to know who else hurts people? Mil Muertes? Yeah, because he's void of human element, just like the bad Godzilla films. Wow. I such high praise, such devastating critiques. Oh, Ugh. except like he's good. Mill's good. The Godzilla films where the human stuff is boring and just void, that stuff's bad. Mill's yeah. good. Mill yeah, Mill's great here. Uh DDT chopped. I not I don't know. I'm sure I've seen it before, but to see someone chop someone inside out, like to see them like throw a chop and then Phoenix takes a flip bump is fucking so exciting. Oh, well, speaking of DDTs, I've been getting mm. into whenever I see someone who I'm like, oh, just get them off the screen. I say, oh, someone should DDT them. I and agree. We were watching the Jordan Kempler from Daily Show, Finger on the Pulse, and yeah. he was interviewing people at a Trump get together, not a rally because not enough people showed up. Amazing. Amazing. The mental gymnastics. There, oh, speaking of mental gymnastics, there were these mm -hmm. two older women, maybe late 60s, discussing to him how Trump, because of a law he passed, the military is the ruler of our country. And then Jordan goes like, so uh, like Trump is responsible for sending troops to Ukraine and all that. And they're like, oh, no, 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 that, no, that's not, that's not the military. And they're like, she, they're, he's like, what are you talking about? And they're like, there are two militaries. And he says, okay, so like a good one and a bad one. Is that what you're saying? And they say, absolutely. And I go, oh my God, someone DDT these women. I mean, truly. <laughs> oh, some people deserve a DDT. That's the thing. I love Jordan Kempler, uh, Kempler, Klump, Klumper. One of the Kemp two. I love Jordy K. I truly do. I feel bad that like I will have a like a threshold to the show sometimes where I'm like, I'm so glad he's getting these people and these takes on camera because we should know that people are thinking these are human thoughts and should be shared. Like we should be aware of this. I can't watch it all. The like mm -hmm. I, I will reach a threshold where I'm like, I got to just stare at some paint drying for a little bit. Something wholesome. I don't care what.
Nicole's the same way. So when we watched that one yesterday, I said, you get ready to be mad bright and early in the morning. Aw. You know who else woke up mad bright and early in the morning? Phoenix. I was going to say Mill here, but also Phoenix. Well, I think even more is more Phoenix than Mill. I'm trying to think because I don't think Phoenix is mad necessarily at Mill. He's fighting what he perceives to be evil. Because we've seen Mill, you know, uh, like threaten women and just kind of be a general nuisance. We don't like, we don't exactly know what's going on with Mill. We just know he the, he bullies Chavo, which is great, but then he also bullies everyone else. But what women has he threatened? Katrina. Oh, she ain't a woman. She's a devil in living flesh. She ain't no nun, dude. Okay, that's okay. Do you want to how 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 far do you want to play your misogyny bit today? It's not misogyny. Demons mm-hmm. do not have a gender. Okay. I don't think she's a demon. I think she's. A, if anything, I think she's a witch. Demons do not have genders. Okay. Which you said, but then I disagreed with the premise. Neither do witches. Witches have witches have genders. No, no, no. Witches and warlocks. They can go in and just do whatever they want. That's what magic is. <laughs> Can you say that one more time, but ha- like spit more out of your mouth and almost cry? <laughs> I'm just saying, warlocks and witches, <laughs> they do whatever they want. It's chaos. They that's can- what magic is. <laughs> that's what magic is in Santa. And Santa is magic. He just does what he wants. He doesn't even have to ask his parents for for bedtimes or fucking anything. And it's fine that he still lives at a home when he's 37 years old because he's magic. And that's what magic is. Santa, just like witches and demons, he's a genderless elf, okay? He's a fucking gigolo, even though he's never had sex. And that's fucking great yes god i'm so happy to be a virgin but yeah but but definitely mill is the one i think fired up in this match oh yeah he's rest like he's wrestling more so more than to wrestle phoenix he wants to hurt him he wants something out of this sweet sweet bird lad and that's his soul and his body and his blood he has a fucking tko cutter which looked awesome phoenix finally starts to fire up but he keeps getting knocked down because it's, it's weird. It's, it's hard to fire up when the dude wrestling you is the angry one. After this knockdown, we see Katrina at the top of the stairs. She has finally appeared in the temple. And all the, all the audience who's chanting, Phoenix, Phoenix, or Muertes, Muertes, they finally start. Everybody, everybody agrees to chant Katrina. Yes. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I, I say agree. Demoness. Demoness. No, they don't. Wait, why, why, why do you have to gender the but demon they if they don't have a gender? I don't I, know, guys, okay? I, I truly don't think, she, I don't think she's a demon. She is. That's what Vampiro says. And what he says is law. That we cannot start taking Vampiro canonically. Uh-huh. If we start taking every bit of Vampiroism canon, we're ruined. He's Juggalotus. That's also true, though. I'll give you that. I agree. Mill's distracted, and this is something, this is another detail I really liked. Mill's distracted for, like, a second. He's not, like, on the apron going, what do you mean you're out here? I can't believe, like, for three minutes. He looks, like, he literally just goes to look to see that she entered. And then, but that's, like, literally all Phoenix needs. To come, to, like, string together a full-on combo. Is him turning his back slightly, seeing Katarina... Not and not even bar- not even having because he doesn't even react to Katrina because he do- he he like turns back to Phoenix and Phoenix is all over him ends up with like a three string combo with a tope corkscrew. Who does that? Phoenix. Okay. Who wins this match? I forgot. Oh man, that's what I love about this. That's what, that's what I love about this match too. Is as much as like Mill's on top and Mill is bullying the shit out of Phoenix because Mill probably as they go to the outside. Uh, Mill's kind of rough on the outside. That's when Mill repeatedly smashes, like brutally smashes Phoenix's head into the apron. By the time Phoenix's head comes up, he's got a bloody mouth. Good. It's real nasty looking. But the problem is, but Mill uses that chance to breathe. Literally to breathe. Like he, like he's not like pantomiming. He's not like waving and giving Phoenix. Maybe some of this is the edits, in which case the editor is doing an amazing job. Because Phoenix, because Mill takes a second to breathe, and Phoenix is right back on top. Jumps into the ring, hits a rolling cutter for another two two fall. 
Uh, do you think Phoenix and Phoenixes the birds have a very, very short refractory period? Now, when you say refractory period, do you mean how long it takes for them to have sex after they come once? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just making sure it wasn't like how quickly they reflect light. Oh, or, no. Okay, no. Um, How long do I think it takes Phoenix the Wrestler as well as Phoenix the Mythical Birds to have sex again after they come? How long do I think it takes? Yes. I say this because mm -hmm. <laughs> when I come, I pretty much die, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. La Petite Morte. La Petite uh, Morte. But you are uh, big style, Petite Morte. Uh-huh. Grande. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I like my coffee, okay, for me Starbuck. Hey, listen, I get that. I get that. Every time I come, I almost die, too. But that's because I come mostly blood and a lot of it. Hey, semen has blood in it. Deal with it, guys. Mm -hmm. I'm more like I have blood with semen in it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. It's like in Daybreaker when they have their coffee <laughs> with a little bit of blood in it. Yeah. What is Daybreaker? Is it good? Should I watch that? Oh, no, no. It's super dope. Watch it. Awesome. Also super dope. Uh, so at the end of this match, Phoenix goes to the top rope, as Phoenix is wont to do, but gets caught by Mill with an avalanche code breaker. Mill leaps, which I yeah. don't think I've ever seen Mill leap to the, to the top rope like this, which is awesome. And then just kind of puts both of his knees up and falls on his back, bringing Phoenix into his knee. Brutal, brutal cutoff on the top rope. Then goozles Phoenix to his feet, holding eye contact with Katrina, Flatliner, Bill Moritz wins in 5 minutes, 46 seconds. Oh. And James came bloody buckets. I don't do that. That's you. That is me. That's true. I cried bloody buckets because I love Phoenix. But Mil he, had, he had the fire in him. He had the fire in him tonight. I got to give it to him. When he got it going, he's got it going. And he says, you demoness, you genderless being, lick him. And she says, no, never. Oh, why do you do this, Mill? That's all true. When she says no to the, uh, to the request for the lick of death, he goozles her by the neck, drags her over the top rope into the ring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. Because she's on the apron. Mm -hmm. Looks insane. As he's, as he's doing it, though, she ends up dropping the stone. Which Phoenix clocks. No. Picks up smashes Mill in the face with, but the front of the face, because he's a good guy. He won't hit him from the back. Yeah. <laughs> Which is something I love. Like, you're dealing with supernatural forces. At least one, if, if both are not actual demons, they're definitely powered by demons. Like, you are Van Helsing in this situation, but Phoenix is such a good guy. He's still like, well, I have to turn him around so I'm facing him when I hit him with the rock. Otherwise, I'm kind of, a, that's just kind of a dick move. It's something I love about Phoenix so very much. But yeah, he hits him with the rock, staggers him, Gamangiri drops Mill, goes to check on Katarina and puts, uh, picks her back up on her feet. Katarina licks of death Mill? Huh? Gives Phoenix the sweet post-lick of death smooch? And I love the line, no Lazarus pit can save Mill now, as the animo chance for Phoenix fills the arena. Animo. Animo, animo. I will say, you skipped over a just amazing, like, two-second thing. When mm -hmm. Phoenix goes to pick up Katrina and they, like, look at each other, this is the hottest, most sensual yeah. thing I've ever seen that the rom complex should do each of these matches. Of you just, know what? That's true. Of, like, holy shit, what is going on here? <laughs> oh, my God. I have been told by multiple times I'm forbidden from appearing on the ROM complex because I just keep voting for Donald Trump and I can't help it. What? Uh, but, well, anyway. Oh, oh you, I thought you meant like in, for doing a movie. I'm like, what rom-com was he in? <laughs> All of them, if you think about it. Home Alone 2. That's the big one. But yeah, it's like a, it is decidedly hot because it, it's, that, it's that forbidden like, I can't believe we're about to do this. You know what? Let's run away together. Kind of look. And it's like, oh, there is something so deeply fucking hot about let's run away together. Let's just do it. I'm tired of all this. I can't. This world is not meant for us. Let's go build our own. And it's fuck. Oh, we. 
It's not meant for her, them specifically, meaning Katrina, because she's of hell. I don't think she's of hell. I think she has of hell powers. When we find out she's a demoness in living flesh, Razakel style, but really mm. a demoness in living flesh and not just a rapper stating that, we're sure. going to be eating crow. Well, I'll be eating crow because you'll be like, ha, 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 I was right. Yeah. Well, you know what? I'll have, that means I'll have lunch and that's pretty cool for me too. Eating crow while you're sipping Joe from Starbuck. Hell yeah. I listen to sad country guitar as it rains in the temple on Conan, which is our next little video package. Literally the saddest ass fucking country ass fucking tune I've ever heard in my life. Sean, appear weak when you are strong. That's every day for me. That's not being a humble. That's just plotting. That's it. <laughs> Which is kind of Conan's thing. Like, from day one, Conan's been a piece of shit. Uh, and there is, they've never done this, which I like. It's this almost, if it's almost like these Kingdom Hearts. Like, they're showing, like, this shaky footage and it's all, because it's raining all the time, so nothing's super clear. And then it cuts into, like, like a title card, essentially, with, like, typewriter fonts mm -hmm. of... Appear weak when you are strong. Oh, yeah. In the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. Dude, we have to re-edit this with simple and clean. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? All right, guys. See you later. More simple and clean? Bye. Bye. I'm just <laughs> kidding. If I ever get on the rom complex, uh, I want to do Kingdom Hearts. Uh, Yeah, yes. <laughs> it kind of is. I mean, at least the first one, there is... I, you know what? Because you could either you could go uh, Sora and Kyrie, or you could go Sora and Riku, and either way, you got some sweet romance there. Well, for a rom com, this is a rom tragedy. What are you talking? Goofy's name is Donald Duck is a silly little bastard and brings enough comedy for the whole family. Ten out of ten. I'm saying in the classical sense that a comedy ends with like nice things happening, how you want it to play out. Well, I've never played three. I've only played up to two. Well, and I, everything ends, like, in the classical sense, two, Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 is a perfect comedy. No, it's not. Like, they don't end up together. Kyrie yeah, is in gone. In two, they do. Okay, two, well, I don't do. remember two. You said just one. And I say, I know the ending of one. Kyrie <laughs> like, disappears. And Riku is lost in Kingdom Hearts with King Mickey. Yes. But in two, everyone gets a real happy ending. So we'll do two. Okay. Even though Simple and Clean is only in one. I don't care. I, I don't care. Oh, I don't even oh. care. Simple and Clean is the Queto's office is up next tonight. It's hard for Ivelisse to let go of her number one contender opportunity she oh. believes she deserves. Man, she's cool. She's real neat. The man to be number one contender after defeating Angelico last week, who is standing behind her as well as half, Son of Havoc. Oh my god. Andrew Lloyd Webber's rendition and portrayal of Angelico Cat. Oh my god. Five stars. This is my guy. There's a reason <laughs> this man is my guy. And because, and like, it's one of those things where you get why, you know, Son of Havoc is with Eva Lee, so that's why he's in the office with her. And you're just kind of standing, like, sitting there watching, going, why is Angelico. You're feuding with these two. Why are you in the office with them? And in my head is because I'm pretty sure Eva Lee was like, get in here. And he's like, yeah. And just kind of like, like, he's a big like, yeah, shrugs his shoulders and goes along with it. He's just a sweet little cat who promised, someone told him there was going to be tuna bites inside. And I love him for this. In the end, when Dario says, Clo hey, close my door behind you. He shrugs his shoulders he's like, okay, closes he's it. So cute. So yes, Ivelisse is demanding the number one contendership. Dario waves her off and her texts and the emails she's been sending to say uh, she won last week, but with Son of Havoc's outside interference. Now, to prove she's a worthy competitor, she'll have to beat Angelico again next week, but no Son of Havoc outside, because he'll be inside special guest refereeing, which is... That's kind of cheating. Oh, That's yeah. bullshit. That's so much worse. That's so much worse. Unless she says, you call it how it is, you fuckhead. And maybe then he's like, you want to know what? I'm going to call it as it is for Angelico. Maybe. Yeah, I guess because I guess Dario is kind of like, yeah, he, he I think he literally says something along the lines of handle your woman, son of havoc. Uh, he says, I hope you can 
manage her in the ring as much as she does you out of the ring. Yes, that's the storyline. God, women need to know their place. Or more so, I'm going too much wrestling, not giving wrestling credit. It might be a little bit, it might be more of Dario Cueto and Vampiro, who are canonically villains. You know, like they, they're, they're, they're bad guys, or in Vampiro's case, loves the bad guys. And instead of having any release, are finding their own new thing. Mm-hmm. Where like, yeah, I don't need to like, I don't need to Macho Man Randy Savage style bully by Miss Elizabeth. She can bully me and it's kind of hot. Yeah. Ivelisse like takes, yeah, and then Ivelisse takes Son of Havoc by the beard and drags him out of the room and it's kind of hot. And then had Helico, and Helico, before he leaves, he doesn't even shrug. He's kind of, he's, A, he's, he's always in dancing animation, like idol animation. Yeah. He's always lightly moving the shoulders back and forth and he just kind of like points his way to the door and then starts, before, before, and I, I almost forget he gets no lines in this piece, but he does serve beautiful puppy dog eyes before almost forgetting to shut the door on his way out. He moves and acts like a character from The Bouncer. Okay, yeah, the, the Square Soft uh, yeah. beat him up. That's, and kind of dress, and maybe not so much now, but like if you see his later stuff, the neon green and like the neon green and black gear he wears, kind of dresses like he's in The Bouncer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yo, and Helico is, and Helico is Squaresoft, and wrestling is Kingdom Hearts. And simple and clean is the way that this trio is making me feel tonight. It's hard to let go. The Temple Training Room is up next, as Puma is working out on a heavy bag, as Patron slow claps behind him and approaches. Sean. Yes, James. Let's just say it. Let's let him know, let him know. We don't have enough patrons over on patreon.com forward slash MLM pod for me to even consider fighting this legal battle with the Dominator. It's done. Thank These you. cages are out of here. Good. However. Why is there a however? Dogs still need to be put in their place as well as their owners. And I saw a revolutionary video on Jimmy here slash shorts YouTube. I need you to know you sound like every man telling Son of Havoc how to behave in his relationship with Eva Lise. It's just this you dog. You would put Eva Lise in the Dominator. This dog just being like, oh, I'm a dog. Yeah, just laying in the sun or something. And this cat's looking at him. And then just starts pounding on this dumb dog. This is the new Dominator. We get big cats, i.e. a puma. We train them to just kind of lord over and, I guess, police a household that has a dog and a dog person in it. Those are, you can't. There are so many reasons we can't do this. I'm not saying a literal puma. I say, like, we get a big ass cat. Okay, because you did a minute ago say a puma. Like a puma. I'm saying, hey, I saw a puma. That makes right. me think we kind of start. Um, You're piecing this together in real time. We start doing scary. this. No, 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 I needed to figure out the acronym FGH, feline growth hormone. That where- can't be legal or healthy. We start pumping these cats and they're just like big right out from the womb even and Boy, oh boy, they're just start going. They're not attacking. They're, they're just bullying. there to have a dominant presence in a household that absolutely needs it. Because if you are a dog person, guess what? Life has been a little too easy for you. Wait, what? Now this is a punishment for people owning dogs? Dog people. That's what I'm saying. If you are a dog person, you absolutely need to be put in your place a little bit by a dominating <laughs> cat. Or you could just own a dog and be happy. Ugh, no. They You're push, allowed to be happy. They, it, no, no, no. Because dog people push their dogs on us, so we can push a big cat on them, okay? You literally wake up every morning to this sound of the love of your life serenading the cats who clearly run your shit. Yeah. I don't need a dominator of a cat. Mm-hmm. A catenator. And See, this is the thing. We need to catch it. We can't just call it the dominator. We should, because it's legally, we can no longer after the uh-huh. multitude of lawsuits, which you did get my message. I did flip on you severely in court. Mm-hmm. Did you know you, you know that? Okay. I don't want that coming up later and it being a thing. It, just even in the 
proceedings before we even took it to court because I we didn't even settle. It was just Mm -mm. I concede. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, honestly, I was I had more flipping to do and I'm bummed I didn't get to flip more. But however, in my conceding, we will be succeeding. It's okay. watching also just think of all the ad revenue on YouTube seeing these cats just prowl around, you know? This bit sucks. No seating about it. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Man, like check him. out Brunch Prov. Nicole, we were trying to figure out why is it called Brunch Prov? It should be called Lunch Prov, but then Nicole's like, oh, they're all comedians. 1 p.m. is brunch for them. Oh yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and we're just working, and, it's, and it's, it's, it's happening today, and it's just going to be a real nice little workout of comedy uh, sets, as just like Puma, working out on this heavy bag, as this fucking, you know what, he's in another segment tied to the rest of the temple, Alberto Al Patron slow claps from behind Puma. He's tied to something, I guess, he uh, lets him, he says uh, he doesn't know what Conan told Puma to motivate him, but that Puma's got a man up, because Cage is not even a man. Dude's a freaking machine. It's crazy. I And we can't even talk about him anymore. All of the... I will be editing out anytime we discuss Cage or one of his matches. Why? Because it's too close to the Dominator. It's I'll start not. getting sad. Don't stop erasing the career of a brilliant wrestler who took a, it took a long time for him to get noticed in the mainstream. He's finally getting noticed. He deserves his praises because of your shitty invention, which is really an excuse to abuse animals. Brian Cage is the man who is a machine. We need to start calling him by his full name, Brian Kajlowski, because, you know, his stage name is a cage, you know? Okay, that's Brian the, man, the machine on a man. Is terrifying, and I guess and Patron Patron recognizes that, but he's also like, whatever, dude. Patron, he warns Puma to watch his match tonight because if you keep that title, you know I'm coming after it. Man, I hope he doesn't get it. Who, uh, Puma? No, I hope Patron doesn't get it. Oh, I'm yeah, no, I get the oh, man. It mm, why is he here? Second match of the card is Big Rick versus Sexy Star, uh, which we talked about before. This match is to determine who gets to take on the crew in a handicap three-on-one match, which is a weird, it's a, that's a weird stipulation. This match is beautiful comedy. And how so? Okay. It escalates mm-hmm. so perfectly. It starts out, Sexy Star's like, I'm going to beat you, but he's in a movable mass. She is small. But then she, like, starts kicking his legs. Ha ha, that's like he falls down and he's like, okay, maybe I need to go on a little bit of defensive. They're fighting. She's landing some hits. And then eventually, because this is a very short match, he mm-hmm. picks her up. Like, he's angry because she's been landing some nice hits on him. Picks her up like she he's gonna just body slam her on the ground but then like just a like real nasty look at one yeah you're an Aggie position then he's like i don't need to do this i have some sort of reputation to uphold and th- like i've never seen this executed so well because you'll see other people be like oh i'm huge and this is a tiny person i can pin them so easily but this i laughed so hard at because he <laughs> He's doing it not showboaty. He is reluctantly doing this like he doesn't want to. He just like takes her from almost slamming her on the ground and gingerly pushes her, like sets her on the mat with both hands on each of her shoulders. <laughs> One, two, three. There's no way she could have gotten out of it. I thought it was very, very funny. <laughs> I was like... I don't know, man. I might be I might be too much of a simp for professional wrestling in general. I thought it was very there was something very beautiful about this character arc of Big Rick, who like is a violent person and is and like the, again the the goal of this match is to be the one who gets to create violence on the crew, but he has nothing against Sexy Star. Mm-hmm. There is no real the only th- the only the only real issue they have is that they're in each other's way to getting to the crew. But even like Big Rick from like you know the first couple episodes to Big Rick now. He has the awareness to recognize that Sexy Star is not my enemy. Yeah. She's she she's in the way to my true enemy, but that doesn't make her my enemy. That makes her an obstacle I can overcome. Mm-hmm. And so instead of, like, destroying her and, like, hurting her, he just pins her and wins the match and gets the stipulation he wants. And it's a good thing he did that. 
because right after the match, Cisco and Bale of the crew come out to confront Rick, while Castro sneaks up behind and whacks him with a kendo stick. Sandman style. Sandler. Abadi <laughs> dooby. Uh, but sexy, but sexy because she did not get Uranagi to hell and back. Uh, eventually, kind of wakes up and starts fighting back. A quick thing: I brought Please. up the Sandman because on some Nick Cage movie, I think it was, someone started like hitting mm-hmm. someone, and I was like, "Yeah, Sandman style." And Nicole goes, "Explain that." And I go, "Oh, in ECW, <laughs> there was a wrestler," and she's like, "Oh, I thought you meant Adam Sandler." <laughs> and then I, "Oh, yeah," because I did like an impression of the Sandman, and she said, "Oh, yeah," because I was like, "That's a bad Adam Sandler." I was like, "Oh no, my my Adam Sandler is pretty good. This is mine." Have a do, have a d, and then she laughs real hard. I think that w- that wasn't you, was it? No, it wasn't okay, me. good. I don't think so. Nicole is the funniest person on this podcast, and she's not on. She needs to come on an episode. <laughs> yes, we'll watch a Sandman match. Um, unfortunately, the crew keeps kind of getting the better of them until uh, like it's weird because like Sexy does fight back, but kind of gets her shit kicked in. Uh, ends up taking a cycle roams. But she buys enough time for Big Rick to recover, who lays out everyone. Mm -hmm. Like, really is about to start fucking dominating some dudes until the crew hightail it out of there. Which I think a team team will form up. Between Big Rick and Sexy? Yeah, I think that's where this is heading. I would watch that. I would would absolutely watch that. There was one one thing I noticed about this, which, which I always find... I find strange in a psychological sense. Because we talk about, like, baby faces and heels... But it's it, like one of the things to remember about uh, Lucha Underground is that it's coming from the Lucha Libre tradition of Technicos and Rudos. Yeah. We talked about before, like it's not, it's not so much, Technico is not so much good guy and Rudo is not so much a bad guy as in how they, it's not who they are, it's how they win. Technicos win via technique, Rudos win via doing whatever it takes. Well, and one of the things with the Sexy Star sort of offense up top is that there was really, not that, not that the wrestler had no technique, but that the like, like she had like sexy star of the character had like no planning. It looked like it looked like she didn't take a second to like create a technique and a plan versus the Phoenix Mill match we saw earlier, mm-hmm. where you know like Phoenix huge size disparity, huge size disparity. But Phoenix came in with so many different avenues and and ways to so many different moves and so many ways to get into those moves. He came in with so much technique to overwhelm Mil Muertes, who ends up playing the Rudo. Mm-hmm. Where, like, Big Rick, in the way he, like, recognizes he doesn't have to urinagi her, he can just hold his arms, hold her arms down, exhibits more technique in this match. Yeah. I just, I found it very interesting in that. I just found it interesting, I guess, in observance of Technico. As you were talking about the differences between, you know, heels and, like, in... United States wrestling, it's you're a good guy, a bad guy, and sometimes a tweener. You you might have that. Maybe an anti-hero a little bit. But I really like how Lucha Libre goes at it because it's more D&D minus the neutrals where you have yeah. lawful good, lawful evil, chaotic good, chaotic evil. Mm-hmm. And good is not – is a very subjective term. It's what is good. Like you, like you can have an ev- a traditionally – your big bad evil guy could be what is considered lawful good. Yes. Wait. That's very po- No. It could be. They might conceive themselves to be lawful good, but in the grand scheme of things, people would be like, well, what you are doing is evil. Your delusions of grandeur are making mm. you think what you are doing is for the better. I mean, this is also uh, high level D and D thinking that we have zero time to get into. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, but I will say real quick because it wouldn't be a delusion of grandeur. It would be delusion of culture. If, for instance, they were raised and they had like not so much not Sauron, but if there was like a generation after Sauron who was like, well, listen, my father taught me this is what good guys do. They raise an army of orcs and they hunt a bunch of halflings. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not even like I'm going out and making that decision for myself. I was raised to believe that. Yeah. And if someone came up to me with that character sheet and said, I think this means lawful good, I'll be, and it, it all, it still comes down to subjectivity. 
And if there's a real D and D nerd out there, uh, flame on, baby. I don't give a shit. Yeah, as long as you're not a D and D nerd coming to me saying like, well, technically a paladin can't be evil. They, they, this and that. And it's like, no, they can. You know, it's a oath breaker. Anyone These can are be evil. Yeah. People who are so sticklers for the rules, even though there is a rule for paladins being evil, uh, mm. suck. Old breaker, baby. But I do love, that is a very awesome point. They suck, but that is an awesome point of technical Rudo being a lot more open-ended. Mm -hmm. um, and in a way, because they are a lot more traditional or babyface, good hero, villain, babyface, heel is subjective. There's a subjectivity to it. Like Stone Cold Steve Austin is kind of a piece of shit. <laughs> Like, I love him, and he's a, arguably the biggest baby face in the history of baby faces, but does nothing that is a baby face would do. He's a piece of shit. He, he attacks people from behind. He does kind of whatever he wants. Like, he's just very popular. Like, it, it, like there's a subjectivity to it, but because it's so open-ended, where Technico and Erudo, you can, sometimes the Technico will get booed, but it's, mm -hmm. but it's how they win their matches. It's what they are actually doing, not what they are saying they're doing. Yeah. God, I love wrestling. Except for this match. The main event. I thought you were going to say, God, I love Dungeons and Dragons. I also love Dungeons and Dragons. I do fucking love Dungeons and Dragons. New Derms Clerman coming out this week. It's a real good one. It's stupid as fuck. Let's fucking go. You're speaking as stupid as fuck. Uh, Lucha Underground bridges cultures. It does what NAFTA couldn't do, which is, I guess, bring Alberto Al Patron to television? I don't know what Mad Striker is trying to say. Hey, all I know is this is Alberto's birthright. He's a goddamn Nepo Lucha. I literally have that. Uh, there's a, before this, this main event, there's a bit of a video package where... Let me, let me see. I have, I have the quote. I have uh, the exact quote, what Alberto says here. And because we talked before, he is the nephew of Mil Mascaris, the uh, son of Dos Caras. He does, he, it, it runs in his blood. So he says, he says, I was born into this. I'm a big stinky Nepo baby who can't keep a job and only works today because Conan does not do background checks for AAA. I think that's what he says. Word for word. That's what he says in the video package. Yay, yay. He does still work today. It's because Conan does not hire his shitty people sometimes to work. So before uh, we start, like, the match match, as Alberto's coming out, they're discussing how he's like, oh, Tejano stole my stuff, or, what, you know, whatever's going on. Or it's the other way, Te Tejano accuses Alberto of stealing his title. And Vampiro says, Tejano, I wrote down, Vamp agrees Tejano is the champ, i.e. Tejano is the champ. That's true, because we take everything Vampiro says very vividly. I do. Vampire Warrior of the Night is the greatest movie ever made. Yeah. Chris Jericho is a big, stinky piece of shit. I, I only have two notes for this entire match. I have, I have a little bit more. On the video package, before we blow past that, uh, and it's just like, it's, it's, your, it's your traditional introductory video package. He's uh, it's kind of cut with Alberto working out and then him talking about, like, where he came from and everything. And he's getting over this catchphrase. It's the, uh, I'm Alberto El Patron, but you already knew that. Which is not a very good guy thing to say. Yeah, I don't know why this man is I a cult leader. I don't want to cheer for this man. He is a cult leader. He does not give us vibes of a man who should be cheered this much. But he is. It is insane that this dude with just... Zero life in his eyes is being championed as the greatest of all time. I mean, and to be fair, a lot of it does come from his family and his legacy, which is different. I mean, which is which is different culturally than it is in America. There's not a whole lot of we're getting it more now. I mean, obviously, Randy Orton, The Rock was a great example, uh, but he never really played off of his family legacy. But like, I don't think there was because to be fair, it's not even like. Like Rock, like uh, Rocky Johnson, uh, uh, Rock's father, mm -hmm. was a big deal, but wasn't the big deal that say Mel Mascaris was. Yeah, or Dos Caras. Like Alberto's coming from a huge like lineage, and before he came over to WWE, he was a big deal. 
And then he was a big deal. I remember I remember when he debuted in WWE. He was part of, like, because he was around the same time that CM Punk was there. And both of those guys were like, hey, maybe we're moving in a, maybe we're moving in a new direction. Maybe WWE will finally be watchable again. I remember a lot of people, like, a lot of, like, lapsed wrestling fans or, like, when I, when I would talk about how, like, it was hard for me to watch wrestling again, a lot of people were like, have you seen this Alberto guy? Mm-hmm. Like, those were the two guys. They would always ask, like, have you seen this Alberto guy? Have you seen this CM Punk guy? These guys are like they were part of like there was so much hope. Wrestling has been sh- was so shitty for so long <laughs> that like to yeah to see these guys come out there was like a lot of hope in these two dudes. They're like man, these two dudes are coming to WWE and they're resurrecting the ECW name brand. <laughs> Hell no. yeah, I'm <laughs> excited. <laughs> <laughs> we were so naive, truly. <laughs> You're telling me they're going to let Balls Mahoney work on WWE television? Let's fucking go, Balls. Like, there was... Uh, and I think... Because I don't think... Actually, I don't think Alberto spent much time in ECW. I think he pretty quickly went to SmackDown. SmackDown. Well, that was a thing. There was this weird hope that, like, I guess... And it still lingers. And even and even this thing where even, like, after WWE... And, you know, we didn't know... What, not I don't think everything came out immediately. You know, it's 2014... So, like, Twitter's definitely a thing. The internet's definitely a thing. But there was, I think there was still, A, we didn't know everything. And B, we so many people just wanted to believe. And C, there was a handful, uh, I don't know if you knew this, there are some kind of not great dudes who watch wrestling. A lot of, like, uh, well, I can separate the art and the artist. Like, you shouldn't have to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> this man should not get work. Which, to be, like, I will say, psychologically, as I'm, like, writing down, because I, I do have the match pretty well notated out. It makes sense. And there is an entertainment there. And the crowd's on fire. The crowd loves the, the crowd loves Alberto and hates Tejano. Okay, there might be one person in the crowd who does not. Well, there's a couple things. But like for the most part, like it makes it structurally it's a structurally sound match uh, that people are excited for. Except for maybe one guy. Also, this man who is like, yeah, he's a champion. We love him, but we hate this dude because of the things he does. Alberto does the things that he does that makes him hated. Like literally. Oh, yeah. The final bit of his video package is Alberto getting jumped by two faceless goons for reasons. I don't know. I guess he's Batman. And he goes, punch, punch. Uh, and he literally he's like re- he's like recapturing. It's, it's the end of the package. He's uh, re-saying his catchphrase. I'm a Alberto El Patron. But you already knew that. Winks at the camera. Uh, well, hold on. He says that over footage of himself winking at the camera while snapping the neck of faceless goon number two. <laughs> Who the <laughs> fuck is this guy? Casually murdering and winking. How do you not already know? I do already know that. That's true. <laughs> Who is he? He's douchebag Batman. He's douchebag Batman. That's his whole character. He's rich. He can. He's wealthy. He can afford all the best training. And he he winks while he snaps the necks of faceless goons. He's douchebag Batman. Uh, I no. I think he's douchebag Bruce Wayne because he's not, <laughs> not wealthy. Not his family is. That's true. He's douchebag Bruce Wayne. Even though, yes, he's made money. He was a star in WWE. We know. We're just razzing the dude. I mean, not for that long. I don't know what his... And he still has to work. I don't know what his finances are. This is not the reason to attack him. The reason to attack him is because he's terrible to women. Sean, match, go. We've spent 15 minutes vamping up to the match. If you don't want to talk about the match, I'll say my two notes and then we're done. Plugs. Oh, no, it's fine. Uh, it's well because I'm more interested in who Alberto is over this match. But the match is fine. Uh, open with a hip toss from El Patron. Uh, gets Tejano powdering out. El Patron chases after, but Tejano catches him in the ring, starts stomping him out. It's a lot of that. It's a lot of Patron having the technique, having the power, having the fire. But Tejano finding ways to sort of shortcut him and take that and, and cut him off at the knees. But it's never super long. Tejano, like, uh, pretty soon Alberto gets that Hogan fire, gets his 10 punches with his chef's kiss in the corner, which admittedly, it's awesome. I do love the 10 punch in the corner. And then, at the, like, at the 10th punch, he double he double fists chef's kiss. Oh, chef's kiss are fucking dope. This man sucks. But I wanted to steal that. 
It's appropriation of chef culture, okay? The culinary okay. arts are the only people who should be doing chef's kiss. I don't know. Some would say these two are cooking. <laughs> I'm on TikTok. But you only scroll, you idiot. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Fuck you. How dare you? How dare you? Uh, back in the ring, Alberto chance to fire him up against Tejano's sleeper. Uh, but, but Alberto flies off the top to Tejano's drop kick. It was very nice. Tejano catching Alberto midair with that drop kick. Tejano uses the ropes to choke out Alberto. Referee Marty Elias breaks the illegal hold to Marty chance. Marty. Like again, again, it's like I. Th- it feels like the like the crowd was pretty excited for this match. There's a lot of Alberto chants. I was very taken aback by the Marty chants. Like that, not that just the crowd knew Marty Elias by his first name, but were so excited that he would break a hold, they would chant his first name at him. That's how we know this isn't a studio audience. This is wrestling fans in a studio. Yeah. Which is what, you, which is absolutely what you want. Yeah. I still, I, th- I think about it to this day, and it, it confu- it confounds me. It doesn't confuse me, but it does confound me. I think of it to this day, the day in which I watched this episode. Yeah, yeah, I watched it two a.m. last night, so it's the same day. Anyway, <laughs> uh, both men be uh, does uh, Alberto uh catches Tejano on the top rope. After that, gives himself a moment with his superplex. They beat a 10 count to start trading punches. So like that's like, yeah, Alberto finally gets his cut off and then they just start trading punches. Like there's almost this reset, but they're a little more tired now. And they're just like, like structurally, this match is sound. Sean, did you listen in headphones? Yeah. Why? Because Patron beats down Tejano. And I, I believe this is they're directing it at Alberto. Because he, like, goes to the crowd and he's like, yeah, and then someone in the crowd just screams a Spongebob style, you suck, and it's so fucking good. I did hear that, and I agreed with that guy. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. And, like, if he only knew then what we know now, we would all agree. We all knew how his TNA goes in like a couple of, maybe like, I think less than a year. Agreed. This guy stinks. But like Tejano's working. And Tejano's working great. Yeah. Uh, Alberto's uh, telegraphs a super kick. Tejano ducks for a spine buster for a two. Uh, A lot of close falls. Tejano positions Alberto for another superplex. Alberto, I love this. This is when Alberto, he's trapped on the top turnbuckle for like an hour. But it's awesome. Uh, like, yeah, Alberto blocks the superplex, so Tejano just starts clubbing into the back, takes a second to walk away, and boots him in, like, just punts him in the mouth while he's doubled over on the top turnbuckle. It looks such a mean kick. I wrote down a stomping on the ropes because, yeah, he's, like, kind of making the rope in the corner a hammock. So he's, like, elevated off the ground, and then Mm -hmm. Alberto just, like, Kind of oh, Mario stomps. Oh, that's not. Okay. No, no, no. This is Tejano. Uh, Tejano kind of like rips Alberto down. Like Alberto is kind of like sitting on the top rope. He pulls him down. So he's hanging over it. And then he just punts him. Okay. It's like a little simple. But then it's this. Uh, he turns around. He goes to the court, the opposite turnbuckle. He starts ripping off the turnbuckle. Oh, yeah. And Marty Elias, fan favorite, is like, you can't do that. Give me that turnbuckle. I got to put it back on now. You can't just be breaking my ring. And while the referee does that, Tejano grabs the bull rope, takes, starts hitting him, starts cheating with the bull rope. Like a, a classic move, nothing spectacular, nothing hasn't been seen before, but a nice piece of business that does make Alberto this baby face. Mm-hmm. And then when he finishes up with the bull rope and Marty Elias comes back, Tejano is like, now is the time for my superplex, which Alberto blocks again, punches him a few times off. Then we get this hammock spot. Oh, man, it's so good. It's a double double stomp to the chest. Uh, big Mario. It's like, wow, you should be dead right now. Mm-hmm. It's a, if, if, you're, if you're watching a lot of WWE, it's a big Finn Balor. I think Finn Balor uh, uses the, that one a lot. And it looks great. It's why I feel so bad for Turtles every time I see an Italian hanging around. I never let Italians hang around Turtles alone for too long. I just don't trust them. <laughs> 
or big old chicken chefs from Spyro's Ripto's Rage. Oh, absolutely don't trust a chicken chef. Or two sheep on stilts. Now, from Spyro One, <laughs> if that dude were to eat some turtle meat and say Mwah, "Chef's kiss," I'd be like, "Okay, yeah, he's he can do it." Cause he earned his chef status by chefing it up. Mm-hmm. Or if he said, "Suck on my chocolate salty balls," I and was then chef's kiss. I was going to reference <laughs> that chef as well, saying <laughs> he's, he's but chocolate salty he's balls. He's also a chef, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah, he has the hat. It's fine. I will say, I don't remember what I was gonna say. Um, I'll keep going then. So here's the double stomps. By the way, he's been wrestling with his shirt on this whole time, which is, I don't know, man. Let me objectify you a little bit. I don't know why he was wrestling with his shirt on this whole time, uh, Patron. But after the double stomps, he's like, let's go. Everybody look at my nipples. I'm going to telegraph my uh, my submission finisher, Rompe Destino. Uh, but he telegraphs it a little too hard. I feel, uh, Tejano heard his nipples coming. Because he counters it with a big old sit-out power bomb for another two. Hell yeah. I started watching Kunk on Earth, I think is the name of the show. It's a Netflix mockumentary of just, hey, this is the world. It is so funny. It's a British show. So this woman is delivering lines as if she's 100% like, yes, this is me. Two mm. actual experts on Earth history. It's very mm -hmm. funny, but they started talking about Jesus and like him always on the cross. And whenever people bring up like I I, I want to tweet this, but I'm like, I think people will get like very angry with me, which is <laughs> Jesus wasn't that muscular. He was just dehydrated. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> if you create I mean, it sucks because Twitter is about to die. So maybe do it on Tumblr. But just like an alt account, like a burner account of just Jesus bodybuilding criticism. Yeah. I would follow that in a heartbeat. Jesus, maybe he was just eating bags of fried rice the night before on Good Thursday. Honestly, half of Jesus is drinking vinegar and good lighting. It's uh -huh. fucking bullshit. Yeah. It's fucking bullshit. Your religion was based on lies. Uh -huh. <laughs> not that he's not the son of man, but that he, his body is like... A seven at best. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, and that's coming from a couple of fours, okay? Oh, yeah, three over here, baby. Okay, well, I these cum gutters. Cum, your cum gutters give you a four. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My soft, doughy physique gives me a solid three. And this, I was going to say this match gives me a big old ten and a half inches of hard penis, but that's not really true. Tejano gets caught with an arm breaker after the powerbomb. And the super kick, Patron finally gets his super kick in. Uh, a desperate Tejano goes for the bull rope, but Alberto counters with a tornado DDT. Afterwards, Alberto's now seeing the bull rope, uses it himself for the disqualification. 12 minutes, 19 seconds. Yeah, see, this dude isn't your hero. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing, and he's going to keep that clothing on throughout the entire match. Also, and I don't know. I don't want to... I don't know. What to, I'm curious. I guess what everyone else feels, because I want to read off the times. So this, and that's the last match of the of the night. Mm -hmm. There are three matches on this entire episode. Mil Moretes and Phoenix go five minutes forty six seconds. Yeah, yeah. Big Rick and Sexy Star one minute fifty three seconds. Not really a match, I would say. A great story, but there are also like match elements after both of those matches. True, but then. Tejano Alberto get 12 minutes and 19 seconds to end in disqualification. Not just that. I looked, I was like, wow, we're already on our last match. I got like 10 more minutes left. Look at the file size. And I'm like, oh, there's, we're halfway through the entire episode. So either this mm -hmm. is going to be a long ass match, which everyone knows I don't like, or there's just going to be so much ramp up. Maybe there's some extra packages we get, we get thrown to. But no, like it, there's so much ramp up. Yeah, there's like a little bit. After the match, Alberto keeps hitting Tejano. He gets a 10 count with the audience. And the audience give him a 10 count as he's beating him with the bull rope. They're sadistic. Uh, and, then, and, they, and then he winks to the camera for the sign off. This fucking goddamn creep. This is why snuff exists, guys. Fuckers like the people in the temple. You're like, I'm a, listen, I'm a fucker like the people in the temple, and I love being a fucker like that. 
I just, I don't know, man. <laughs> the funnier thing would have been like, hey, man, I love snuff, but what he was doing in that ring, no bueno. Well, it wasn't because he's missing with the rope shots half the time, <laughs> which, like, is fine if you do that three times. Because he's, he's doing the overhead, like, bull rope shots. Like, he's using almost like a whip, which I feel like works for three. It doesn't work for a ten count. Because we, yeah. No, okay. Th all the ropes are technically landing, but they are hitting him in a way that aren't going to do brutal damage, like literal to him. He's still getting hit with a rope, but not like, mm -hmm. not with a tip. More so like three feet into the rope. Yes. I, th I think the goal is for Alberto to land the tip of the rope on the mat in front of him first. Mm-hmm. So that it doesn't, so that the first contact of the rope is not a Hano's body. The first contact of the rope is with the mat, which, and that's the thing, and it like still looks like it suck, like would suck, mm -hmm. but I don't think looks good on a ten count. I feel like you do three of that, and then you ball it up in your fist, and you get a ten count with the bull rope in your hand, because you can like, because you can fake that and make it look, you you can like pull your punches and make that look better than the rope. Nah, I don't I don't know. Maybe I just fucking hate Alberto and I'm looking for reasons to shit on this man. That's also fair. This dude sucks. I was just seeing that thinking, wow, that would hurt. Okay, that's fair. I'm I'm sitting here thinking like, fuck man, don't ten count the don't ten count the whip shots when you have to like again, we can we can like see the rope. We can see the rope hit the mat first. Do that like do three on that and then Get like a ten shot in the corner with the with the rope around your hand. If you want the crowd to get that, if you want the crowd to make that ten count reaction, yeah. And it, I don't know. And again, or maybe I'm just nitpicking this man because he sucks. I don't well, know. All I know is I was chanting Teha no Teha no by myself inside this room while Nicole in the kitchen was probably like, "The fuck is he doing?" See, I'm a big Marty Elias guy. I was chanting Marty, Marty, Marty. Ooh, ooh. Or, and and then right afterwards, I was chanting, oh, there's one more. Oh. Uh, oh I was yeah. chanting Cueto's office, Cueto's office, because because we see a fit we have not seen before, and 10 out. You know what? All the bullshit of this last match is worth putting up with just to get to this brand new fit check. Dario is... <laughs> Dario lets Cowboy King Cuerno know... That Johnny is tired of being attacked from behind. This is not the King Cuerno you and I know. This is Cowboy King Cuerno. Wait, wait. This was King Cuerno? Hell yes, it was. With the with the checkered shirt, the jeans, the, the, the real nice tight jeans showing off the butt, and the real low-brimmed cowboy hat. So when Cuerno... Cowboy King Cuerno. When Cuerno is just like in his regular day clothes, he looks like someone in Texas Walker Ranger, however yes. that is. He is the Walker Texas Ranger. There we go. In, in mask, of course. Low cow and and oh, he keeps and the cowboy hat is so low. You know the cowboy hat is covering his eyes. You know he's sitting in the shade of that brim. This is some Los Luchadora shit. Oh fuck yeah, it is. And those fuck and he's got the boots and you know the jeans are tucked into the boots. And I did I mention this man? He's got a great took. Is the the denim frames it marvelously. Okay, they're talking about something, but I am distracted by Cowboy King Cuerno. To those who don't watch the show or maybe watched it when it came out, I would like everyone to know anything below the like collarbone. Sean is making up in his own true. mind. He does kick. He, he is, his feet are on the desk, so we see the jeans. Okay. Like, briefly. I am. But we do not I, see I am a filling butt. in a lot of gaps. I am, yes. I am filling in a lot of gaps. But you know. You can see by the way the jeans are laid on this man's succulent leg morsels. You're not filling in gaps. You're filling in wranglers. Cuerno oh, wouldn't be yeah. caught dead in oh, gap I, clothing. That's for goddamn true. Not Cowboy King Cuerno. Uh-uh. This actually is important, so I, I'll talk about what they actually say, but I cannot stress enough. Seek out images of Cowboy King Cuerno. I love it. Daria lets Cowboy King Cuerno know that Johnny's tired of being attacked from behind. Quote, and he made quite the convincing argument. I couldn't say no. Trust me, El Cazador. 
It is better to lock up someone inside of a cage. That way, they can never get away. The double meaning. Not a metaphor, because both meanings are very literal. He's, tall, he's Matanza locked inside of a cage, as well as this upcoming cage match between Johnny Mundo and King Cuerno. Oh, yeah. Uh, with the hat. And he does it, man. They cut back to Cuerno. Hat low. And he does the one finger tip up. To let to let to, so he can make eye contact with Dario Galway King Cuerno is my fucking guy. It's as if Violent J is writing this episode. Oh, uh, I lo- this is what Big Money Wrestlers should have been. Uh huh. Oh man, I'm this- sorry, Shelby, that we made you watch that shit movie. I'm. You're welcome, Shelby. Speaking that of- we introduced you to cinema. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of that, Sean, you got to come on This Existed over on Patreon.com yes, forward slash MLM pod because in the month of March, we are doing yet again all This Existed. All four Fridays will be Corey and I discussing a specific type of film, and this year is Troma Films, and we Whoa. already got one picked out for you. Whoa, is this a featured Cowboy King Cuerno no. with the one finger hat tip? Nope, it's called Father's oh, okay. Day. Oh no. <laughs> it's good. It's oh. dumb and stupid and ooh baby. It's about a demon called the Fuckman <laughs> who fucks dads. The Fuckman? Yeah, and it's someone trying to like kill him. Oh jeez. He just goes around fucking dads? Yeah. Wow. Okay, it's, I'm so glad. And this made me. And this made y'all think of me. There's a specific reason that we chose you for this movie, and we will reveal that to you on the podcast. If this involves Jim Kelly getting fucked to death by a demon, I'll be so upset. I don't know who Jim Kelly is, but what are your plugs? You know me, Goose VK on Twitch.tv. I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. I'm shooting blood out of my penis because that's how I come. And that's what I would like to plug. Hey, guys, all I am plugging this week, Height of Horror. Please listen to that show. Presley and I discussing movies in a single year of horror currently on 1998. We are doing Shrieker next week. It's going to be a good time. And I'm on TikTok now with that show H-O-H Pod. H-O-H P-O-D. Check it out. I'm posting clips from the show and my shorter reviews of the movies that I just watch for fun in our fortnight of horror because we do every other week. So hey, that's a fortnight. Hell yeah. And then listen to my new album coming out February 10th, Horror Crunk Entertainment Remix album. It's really fun. More stuff from Horror Crunk in the mix I'm very excited about. And new Dragon Boy Suede MLM stuff in the works. Fuck yeah. And then patreon.com forward slash MLM pod. $5 a month. You get exclusive content every single Friday in the form of podcasts. This existed. Death from Above, a Sam and Max podcast. Mostly speaking Sentai after dark and engage with Nicolas Cage. But $10 patrons get all of that plus monthly bonus content in the form of straight to Patreon. Hopefully by the time this is out, if everything works out, Shark Side of the Moon. We had to delay that one week. That should be out. And then I think we're doing body melt with Melzer for the uh, the end of February one, and you also get shout outs on every single free feed podcast. It seems like maybe Sean wants to come over for body melt as well with Melzer. Ah, body melt. All right. Oh, his body is melting right now. Ah, it's so hot. Ooh, baby. Uh, let's do also the shout outs for those ten dollar patrons, starting with Steve F. But you already knew that. Eric Berry of Ranger Command Power Hour. But you already knew that. Alex Z, the Waz. But you already knew that. Orion, he's a rapper. Defo, D hyphen, F-O. But you already knew that. Jordan B, the Chaos Witch. But you already knew that. Joshua, Jakus. But you already knew that. Steve Barnes of Sweet Child of Time. We're back, baby. But you already knew that, baby. My mother. Mommy, you already knew that. Corey's BFF and roommate, Shane. But you already knew that. From the upcoming podcast, One Piece at a Time, I believe that's the name of it, that fed. But you already knew that, fed. And finally, Core Winning on Twitch.tv, Core Win. But you already knew that. I've been James. 
King Guerno is my new dad. Cowboy style. Bye. Oh, hey. <laughs>